There are ideas that are a twinkle in somebody's eye that are about five years out. I don't really believe too much further out than that because actually, with the best will in the world, you will have something that you don't know about will change your mind for you. So yes, with what you know now, you've got an idea what you would do in five years' time. But truth be told, what you think will happen in five years' time won't, so events will change you. Where do you start? Often it all starts before we ever get into play. So somebody will design a consumer device and they'll design it out of you know a beautiful aluminium case with some holes drilled in it and they'll analyse that and they'll say right for this not to get too warm to the, to the hand because people don't like warm hands we can dissipate x watts. So that's the number you start with. Then you subtract and then you say oh well I want this beautiful new screen and it's got to have 16K resolution or whatever it is and it's got to have these colours and that's going to use this much power. Um, and they say, oh well of course these days people download lots and lots and lots of stuff so we need this much memory. That's going to use so much power. Then we've got to connect that up to some stuff and that's going to use some power. So somewhere down the line I get the dregs that's left and they say, right, this much power. Um, what can, you do? what can you do? So the CPU group will get given a bit and uh, you know the interconnect boys will get given their bit and we get given our bit for say graphics or video or whatever it is. Um, and so yeah I get a budget and of course like all budget discussions you argue you know and you negotiate and you say I can't do it for that I need this and they say that's all you're getting and a bit of horse trading takes place. Is that space as well as power? Is that So it depends who you are. If you're building a super phone, silicon space is almost no object. It's, it's money. So it used to be there was a constant in the industry, 10 cents per square millimetre of silicon. Tested, functioning, packaged, out the door in millions quantity. 10 cents per square mil. Nobody knew why, it just always was. It's actually gone up because the modern processes and the last two processes, that's gone up quite a bit. Um, but essentially it's money. Silicon area is money. Um, but if you're building a, a real hero phone, then I won't say money's no object, but it, it, it's, it's one set of criteria. If you're building a mid-tier phone, um, money is everything. And so they care much more about uh, how much we can do in X square mil. And actually that ends up with two products. So you get one product roadmap that goes uh, how much performance per what, and uh, how much the other pro product roadmap is how much performance per square millimeter. And of course those two overlap a bit. But essentially uh, the Hero phones are all thermally limited. So the different companies, different manufacturers that will have a different power number, but essentially they'll say, what can you do in a watt? Or what can you do in 700 milliwatts? Or what can you do in 1.5? It's because they're making sufficient margin on it that the amount you spend on the silicon is easier. Whereas when you're shipping a, you know, a, 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 a serious shipper of mid-range phones, could be shipping some hundreds of millions of these chips. You, know, you can imagine, take 100 million and multiply it by 12 cents a square mil, and it, it, you know, sooner or later it adds up to real money. So they very, very much care. So every single sort of scrap of silicon they can save is Absolutely. really... Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the margins being worked on these days in that, in that area of the market, very, very tight. We've had stand-up rows about fractions of a square millimetre. Um, this is grown-up. It's a real grown-up game. You know, there are people, as I say, making 200 million chips, uh, you multiply that by 0.3 of a square mil, that's their margin gone. Uh, so yeah, it's a very, very tight game. So that's where it starts. Then that gets handed down to us internally and say, well, what can you do? And it's right, okay. So efficiency, measured two ways, but efficiency is absolutely key to everything we do. Because if, if you weren't doing it efficiently, you wouldn't need a GPU at all. So the only reason you're doing something on a graphics processor is because it's more efficient. You know, try not to forget that and try to make it as efficient as possible. And then you say, well, that's all well and good, but what actually did you mean by do it? And of course, it changes year on year. 
Um, so graphical content gets more complicated. Um, so the 3D games get more complicated. Uh, user interfaces uh, change as well, the way people want to do those. And actually those two are almost completely separate tasks now. A, a GPU that's good at UI and a GPU that's good at 3D gaming are almost different devices. So you have to schmear between the two to make sure they're both being done right. Um, and so we have people crystal ball gazing and say, right, well, if you start designing a GPU now, it's going to be in a consumer device then. I think the content that it's going to intercept with is going to do this. So we better have a GPU that's good at doing that. Oh, OK. So right, we're going to have to change the way we do X. So this unit's got to be ripped up and start again. Oh, that unit, good news, that unit's OK. So we won't do the whole GPU, but this bit's got to be ripped up. Um, and so there's a whole bunch of what ifs go on there. And then clever people go away and say, well, if that's the case, if you give me this set of assumptions rather than that set of assumptions, then I would design it in this way. And then they go away and uh, design it. They, um, they sit around scratching their heads and, and working on whiteboards. And you'll see all of these offices have more, more whiteboards than you could possibly imagine. I've cleaned mine specially for this interview. Then they'll model it. They'll actually write a computer program um, uh, to model how this would work start getting an idea of what's efficient, what's not efficient, then they would probably prototype it as hardware, and then the whole process of simulation starts to try and measure its efficiency. So, um, you know, how much power would it use, how big would it be, how fast would it go, um, and usually, as because this is engineering, not physics, um, go around that loop, you know, repeat, and, repeat until finished. And of course it's never finished. Eventually, the engineering manager says, uh, boys, we're supposed to ship this next Thursday, you know. Come on, stop messing about. Finish it, finish it, that's good enough. Let's get it out the door. I'm, you know, smoothing over some of the cracks. You know, it's never, we're shipping it next Thursday. It's, you know, we're shipping it in six months' time. You've got to stop tinkering because we need to spend that six months validating it. So you obviously are adding in features yeah. as much as capabilities. Yeah. Do you ever have to take old ones out? Yes, but it's very difficult because people say, oh, well, I just want it to be better. I only ever want it to be better at everything than the, the last one. And you say, well, I can make it better at this, but if I could throw out this feature or make it worse at that feature, then um, you know, I could do a much better job on this thing you really care about. And of course, manufacturers are usually very, very reluctant to do that because they say, well, I don't know. I think I might have customers who are relying on that, and I genuinely don't know. So deprecating old features is hard. We get there in the end. It's really hard. If you just have this plan here and want to execute it without the automation, it's really, really hard. It takes a lot of experience and, and even then... And then there's the hash that you find at the yeah, end. Exactly. It's also worth saying that miners tend to work in pools.